Yetkin out of Russia is the 2004 Olympic gold medalist in the super heavyweight division. He's taking on Eddie Chambers out of Pittsburgh. So who is Eddie Chambers? He's 25 years of age and he's undefeated at 30 and 0 with 16 knockouts. But Eddie Chambers has had a long road to this point. At the age of two, the family was abandoned by the mother, so Eddie was raised by his father. They fell on hard times, and in fact, father and son had a full-time paper route to make ends meet. In fact, for a couple of years, they had no heat in their house, nor in the car that they delivered papers. But they persevered, and less than a dozen years later, Eddie Chambers has gone from a cold car delivering newspapers in the middle of the night to Berlin, Germany, for the fight of his life. I'd like to welcome in the former undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, Lennox Lewis. And Lennox, Alexander Povetkin, international experience, an Olympic gold medal on his resume. He's coming off wins against Larry Donald and Chris Bird most recently. That slick boxing style. Meanwhile, Eddie Chambers is a slick boxer who's coming off a win against Calvin Brock. From a stylistic standpoint, with the preparation to this main event, who has the advantage? I would say Povetkin has the advantage, being an Olympic superstar, plus going around the world, boxing all kinds of different opponents. And you could say he had that international experience. He's also boxed Larry Donald to prepare for this fight and Chris Burr to prepare for this fight. Both good, slick boxers. Eddie Chambers really hasn't prepared for this fight in that way, hasn't had that much international experience, but still a slick boxer. So it should be an interesting matchup. Very intriguing matchup when you take a look at the styles and the international experience. Time to take a look at the tail of the tape for our main event tonight, Alexander Povetkin and Eddie Chambers from the United States. Povetkin, 28 years of age, the reach from the <laughs> armpit to the tip of the fist, 26 inches each. Povetkin, 226 and a quarter pounds, Chambers at 219. Time for the rules with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Alexander Povetkin Fast Eddie Chambers fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight. There's a cause caused by an accidental headbutt. We go to the scorecards if the four rounds have been completed and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th and final round. Meine Damen und Herren, the White Lion, Alexander Sasha Povetkin! Alexander Povetkin from Kursk, Russia, the 2004 Olympic gold medalist in the super heavyweight division, is the 2003 world amateur champion and a two-time European super heavyweight amateur champion. 14-0 as a professional, 11 knockouts. He has a lot of international experience at 28 years of age, ready to make his mark in the heavyweight division as a professional. As you mentioned, Bob, his pedigree could scarcely be any better as an advanced amateur. He won almost every tournament he entered at super heavyweight. That's like the number one overall draft pick in amateur boxing. There's Alexander Pokechkin. Ready to make his walk to the ring. Says as a child, he didn't dream of this. He played soccer, was involved in Eastern disciplines in fighting. But he realized that the age of 13 or 14, boxing is the sport for men. And now, Fast Eddie 
Steinberg. Fast Eddie Chambers, born in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. He's 25 years of age, now fighting out of Philadelphia with a sparkling record of 30-0 with 16 knockouts. Limited amateur experience. He had 80 bouts as an amateur. Won the Pittsburgh Golden Glove several times. But no real international experience. This is a huge step up for Eddie Chambers in this environment. And as a prospect from contender, you want to know if this guy's special. In terms of his talent and skill, there's more to him than just an average contender. But there's less of him, Bob. He's even outsized by the relatively small Kovetkin by heavyweight standards. Over a four-year span, he was a headliner at the Blue Horizon in Philadelphia. Now he's going to try to wow them in Berlin. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the main event. Meine Damen und Herren, willkommen im Tempodrom Berlin. Sauerland event presented itself, Runden Schwergewicht. 12 rounds of boxing to determine who will be the number one ranked contender in the world for the IBF Heavyweight Championship of the World. Brought to you in association with Goose and Tudor Promotions and sanctioned by the Austrian Boxing Commission President Willy Palatin. Also sanctioned by the International Boxing Federation President Marion Mohammed, Supervisor Daryl Peoples. The three judges at ringside scoring this bout will be from England, Phil Edwards, De Mexico, Alejandro Cid Lopez, from South Africa, Dion Duarte, and inside the ring, the man in charge of the action at the bell, referee Rinrita Steve Smoger from the United States. And now, for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world, ladies and gentlemen, Dame y Gaspadai, meine Damen und Herren, uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Fighting out of the red corner. Wearing black, trimmed with red, official weight, 99.6 kilograms, or 227, one quarter pounds. A perfect professional record consisting of 30 fights, 30 victories, including 16 knockouts. A native son of Pittsburgh, training and fighting out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, USA, the undefeated heavyweight contender, Fast Eddie! Chambers! Fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black, official weight, 103.1 kilograms, 219 one half pounds. This Olympic gold medal champion is also perfect as a professional. 14 fights, 14 victories, including 11 knockouts. Fighting out of Moscow, from Russia with love, the undefeated Ruski Vitas, the White Lion, Alexander Sasha Povetkin. Uh, gentlemen, you were given your instructions in the dressing room with an interpreter in Russian. Obey my commands, respect the bell, and above all, protect yourself at all times. Touch glove, touch the mama. God bless you both. These are probably the two best heavyweights south of 225 pounds. And if there was such thing as a super heavyweight division in the pros, this fight would likely be for the heavyweight championship of the world. Eddie Chambers and Alexander Povetkin. Getting set to embark upon 12 rounds with referee Steve Smoger here in Berlin, Germany. Chambers with four career first round knockouts, although they came earlier in his career. Bobjetkin has one.
Lennox early in the fight. Obviously, this is uncharted waters for these two. With the stakes as high as they are, what do you look for early as Pavyetkin tries to establish the jab? Well, uh, Eddie has to really get used to Pavetkin because he's not used to that type of style. So he's going to warm up and, and just move around and see what he's got coming at him. And Pavetkin's used to that style. So he's going to, you know, obviously come at him and, and try and impose his, his will on him. You know, I like to say that word. Despite the fact that Chambers is three years younger, he has 107 more rounds under his belt as a pro. Good right hand and a left by Chambers. Backing up Pavetkin. And looking at Povetkin, he seems like he has no sweat on him at all, and, that, and everybody seems pretty cold in there. You know, there's no sweat going around from e either fighter. Good hooks to the body by Povetkin. Both these guys a little loose around the middle, which belies the fact that they both have a high volume output. They'll, they're in there to throw punches. Chambers trying to touch Pavetkin with the right hand to the body. Chambers will use that defensive style. But you know, he doesn't run, he doesn't hold Bob. He's defensive, but he stays within punching range and moves his hands. You know, both, both fighters are getting used to each other right now. In the first round, that's what it is. Both getting used, getting getting warmed up. This is what they're using for the warm-up round. I'm sure there's going to be more action in the upcoming rounds coming. Pretty good action here. Crowd strangely silent. A lot of fans here urging on Pavetkin. But maybe the fans are settling into the fight as well. I haven't really seen any advantage on either side. Now, Reckon is throwing some punches, but he hasn't really found his target yet. And he has had a couple of good body shots, though. Yeah, I mean, that's the only part really open for him right now. The fast that he keeps his hands up really high, and he's, he hasn't been hit with any silly shots yet. That's the only place you can really hit fast Eddie in the body right now. End of round number one for Pavetkin and Chambers. Billy, reach up, Billy. Reach it up. Okay, I like those body shots. I love them. I don't think about it. I didn't see all that with him. You understand what I mean? And then you're gonna let him out, hustle, you hear the crowd. You know what I mean? Get, get them jabbing. Man. He can't handle it. When you're jabbing here, guess what he's doing? He's going for it. So what comes next? Yeah, you know, you have to, you have to work, you have to work. You don't have to stand and wait. You must be the first to take the initiative. See that, see that. When you're close to the rope, Sani have to throw punches at him. But be quiet, You're still quiet. And don't forget your left hand, your left hand, mind you. And be quiet. And don't forget the left one. So he gets set for the start of round number two, scheduled for 12. Eddie Chambers and Alexander Povetkin. Fairly even first round. Pavetkin did some good work to the body. I heard Eddie Chambers' dad say, don't forget the jab and that left hook. Alex, what's it like after, you know, you get that first round where you feel a guy out, you kind of formulate some things in your mind. What do you look for in that second round? Well, the second round, you know, really, you have to depend on the opponent to help you with that first round, tell you what you need to be doing more of. And just like Eddie's father said, you know, he needs to throw that hook. And at this point, he's just waiting and looking to counter, counter punch when he should be gaining more of an offense and throwing that jab at the landing that jab and trying to put his opponent back. Chambers smothers that combination from Pavetkin. He did, and Chambers has landed all the clean punches to the head, but Pavetkin seems to be outworking him. Air Chambers triples up the left hand. Shoots a jab to the chest as well. Chambers. 
opportunity right here. Eddie's waiting when he shouldn't be waiting. He should be trying to mount the mount attack and, and throwing that jab out there, scoring some points. Chambers shoots the right hand to the body. He's mixed up his arsenal here in the second round a little bit. But yet to look at a dig in. Chambers blocking most of that. Gets a right hand in on the inside. Chambers acknowledges it. Chambers said going into this fight, he knew he had to put something on Povetkin to make Povetkin respect him. He couldn't just run around the ring. And you can see him trying to do that. Well, he's standing up to Povetkin, and, you know, he has so much talent that he can, he can move around and stay close to him and not get hit, which is good. But he needs to throw more punches, especially a jab out there, because he has to be looked like he's, you know, scoring punches, scoring points. Chambers is out boxing him, but especially here in Germany with a German promoter and a fighter who's fought locally most of his career, Pavietkin, you have to wonder how rounds like this will be scored. And if you look at Chambers, he's got this little slight bend in his waist when he's bending backwards. It kind of reminds me of uh, some old-time fighters that used to do that. And what happens when, when those guys do that? Oh, good right now. And that was straight on the chin. And it may have woke up Povakin a, a little bit. Fainted the left and shot the right hand and found the puck. Povakin comes back Chambers with a combination of answer. And Povakin swelled up a little under the eye. That, that's a big mouse under his eye right now. Right underneath the left eye. Malcolm Garrett is his cut man. Wednesday night, tune in for Inside the NFL Super Bowl Show. Join Bob Costas, Chris Collinsworth, Dan Marino, and Chris Carter from Phoenix, the home of Super Bowl 42. As the Patriots try to go undefeated. Sasha. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know, you weigh too much. You weigh too much. You have to be faster, faster. Don't wait. You know, that Hans must be flying just like that, like that. Don't wait for him to take the offense. You're the one. You're the first one. Don't forget, you're the first one. And here we're going to see the right hand by Chambers, right on the button. He throws it, but he didn't throw anything after that. Here's another angle at it. Straight right hand. Needs to throw that hook after that. Nice, it was a great though. Faint of the jab again with the right then coming in strong for Chambers. Most meaningful punch landed so far in the fight. And it was one of those punches where it just came out of nowhere and, and surprised Kalvatkin. The difference here is that Chambers is walking a tightrope because Kalvatkin has fight changing power with one shot and Eddie does not. The left hand to the body by Pavyakin. Chambers kind of dips away. That's his style. Again, Chambers blocking a lot of those head shots. Pavyakin with a left hook that misses. Good left hand inside by Chambers. Pavyakin counter. That was the first really clean shot Pavyakin's landed in this fight to the head. And even that... Chambers rode back and negated its power. And you know what Pavekin needs to do is when he goes in there and throws his combination, he can't relax because that's when Chambers is going to have you and he's going to use that speed against you. Chambers again with the left hook to the body. Pavekin digs in with a combination to the midsection. The jab there by Chambers. Right hand snuck through from Pavyekin. Takes a right hand to the body. Chambers with a left hook back to the body. Jab in the right hand from Chambers. Chambers has a good right hand. It comes really quick and really straight. And Pavyekin. You see Eddie Chambers looking down toward Pavyekin's body, and he's thrown right hands down there to make Pavyekin respect that shot, and then he shoots the right hand upstairs. Swelling in the left eye of Pavyekin from those right hands from Eddie Chambers. A 
yet get ripped the right that Chambers zipped away from. Goes back to the body, and Chambers answers with a hook to the body. There's another right hand from Chambers. Pavyetkin blocks some of it. One of Chambers says, Brooke, some uppercuts on the inside. Chambers digs to the body, misses the right. Pavyetkin blocks the right hand that time. Final seconds of the third. What a good round. Ready, Chambers. Good all around. Good all around round. For both boxes. You got a whole minute. You hear me? Okay, now. You know he gets weak after three rounds. You hear me? So stop backing up. You heard what buddy said. Go to the body. When you throw the right hand, be in position to put the left hook with it. How is it? Yeah, it's good. I'll probably get it. Why not? You hear me? It's all right. Well, <laughs> one, 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 even. How's that? Hey, give me those hooks to the body. Yeah, this is another right hand by Eddie Chambers. And this one, you know, straight down down the line. Straight up Povetkin's chin. Good right hand. Sasha. Don't forget, don't forget to duck down. Sanya! Sanya! Can you hear me? Duck down. Good piece of advice. Duck down because Bob Yetkin is eating a bunch of right hands. As we start round number four, scheduled for 12, Eddie Chambers and Alexander Bob Yetkin. Let's check in with our unofficial ringside score. The birthday boy, Harold Letterman. <laughs> okay, Bob. Thank you. <laughs> Two rounds to one. 29, 28 for the little guy. Fast Eddie Chambers. But I'll tell you, in rounds one and three, Eddie Chambers landed some vicious right hands. I thought he won both those rounds. The oh. first shot oh. that he landed was a right hand in round two, but he had given up the round by the time he landed the darn right hand that almost closed up Povetkin's eye. Be as it may, the guy landed a bigger punches is Eddie Chambers, two rounds to one. And a good right hand landed by Chambers again. You know, Pavyekin, Eddie Chambers is doing this against the last super heavyweight gold medalist in the world as in the Olympics. He's an undefeated pro. And what's happening in the middle of the ring is Chambers is outclassing Pavyekin. Well, you know, it's just a, a different style for Pavyekin that I've ever seen. This is a weird kind of style. A man standing in front of you. And he's not really throwing no offense. He's waiting for you to throw. And you're going in there and you're throwing your combinations, but you're not able to hit him. But yet all of a sudden he comes out with a fast punch and you're saying, well, what's going on? I need to make sure that my defense is in intact and, and go after him. But as far as doing more work, Paul Beckham's doing more work. He's pushing the action, but he's not really getting through with a lot of punches. But yeah, when it comes to getting punched in the face, Beckham is absolutely dominating the fight. Yeah, the best bit of advice came from his trainer when he said, remember to duck. Eddie Chambers, very relaxed. He saw the back right hand, hand from Pavetkin. Yeah, and Chambers was a little off balance as he took that right hand. Counter right by Chambers. Pavetkin with the left on the inside. Pavetkin having a better round in terms of clean punching this round. There's the hook to the body. The corner asked for it, and Chambers obliged. Good left hand to the body by Pavyetkin. Good left hand to the body from Chambers. See, Chambers is coming away from his jab when he should be throwing it more. He's depending on that left hook to the body, left hook to the head, but you can only throw it so many times. You have to throw other punches out there to prepare for that punch, so those punches you know, Pavetkin doesn't see. Good left hand counter shot by Chambers. What high level stuff from both guys this round for heavyweights. Punching in combination in close quarters. Standing their ground. And it's funny, this is a small ring. Very good. And Very good. they're not, it's not affecting either fighter for heavyweights. Good fourth round for Pavetkin.
Breathe. Deep breath. Go for it. How are you feeling? All right. Listen a bit. Listen. Listen. You must be sidestep. Duck down and sidestep. Yeah, like. Don't worry about the problem. You look, don't look at like I'm a combination. When you hit a 10 second tap, you got to finish strong. You understand me? You got to do that, man. From not from this round on. You understand? Oh, you understand? Mm -hmm. When you hit a 10 second tap, you got to finish strong. That's just combination. Let's go. Let's go, Let's go man. Go. Get set for the start of round number five. If one of the voices in Eddie Chambers' corner sounded familiar, it's Buddy McGirt, who's been brought in to work with Eddie Chambers. <laughs> Assisting Eddie Sr. And that, that's an important thing, um, what his trainer just said, you know, don't wait. Eddie needs to really go out there, throw the jab, show that he's, you know, not one of these boxers that just sit and wait. This is what he's doing right now, getting on his toes, trying to do something different, using that jab. He's got a terrific jab, he should use it. Look at head and body. This fight reminds me of Ike Ibuchi and Chris Bird. The fight Ibuchi won the larger man by knockout. Differences. Pavekin is not quite as big and strong as Ike, and uh, Chambers puts more on his punches than Bird. Pavekin should be pushing the action. He should be throwing his jab too, throwing some combination and trying to put Eddie against the ropes. You know, right, right there, he takes a step back. He shouldn't take a step back. He should put in the work. Yeah, while Chambers blocked the combination, he comes back and scores with a jab of his own. Chambers again digs that left hand to the body. He's had effect with that. And Kovacin's been working pretty hard. You can see he's a bit, he's a bit winded. And Eddie, Eddie Chambers looks a bit relaxed. Hasn't done too much work. He's still relaxed. And this is the way you need to be going into a long fight. In terms of the geometry of the ring, Eddie Chambers has not been pinned on the ropes so far. And the fight in the middle of the ring would seem to favor him. Chambers blocks that combination. And then he digs a shot to the body. Good left hook to the body. But yet you're reaching. Chambers tries to get the jab working. Blocks the right hand from Pavetkin. Sticks out the jab again. What do you think about that, Lennox? The way Chambers leans straight back from those punches. It's a dangerous thing to do, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's dangerous, but, you know, he's got the kind of waist that's strong enough to, to hold him. And, uh, you know, Calvekin was... Uh, a lot smarter when it came to that, you, you know, what you do in that kind of situation is punch him in the stomach. You know the stomach can't go anywhere, so you, a guy leaning back, you punch him in the stomach. Chambers blocks the combination again. Remember at the end of the last round, in his corner said, when you hear that tap, final 10 seconds, you got to open it up. Lands a combination to the body of those Chambers. Chambers just misses a right hand over the top. Well, Reckon threw a wicked right hand, just missed Chambers as well. Five entertaining rounds in the books. Here at the Tempodrome in Berlin, Germany. You're letting him hit you with punches that should never even get near you. You understand? Quit playing, Eddie. When you hit him with a good combination, step up and step over. The step over move. Come on now. You don't come too far, too long. For this. You got me? Okay. Come on, Eddie. You gotta let them hands go, man. Come on, you, come on, let's go. Stop the bullshit. You really man, gotta go. go. You understand right. me? Hey! Yeah, we probably know. Left right. Left right. Left right. Just have to think. Sasha. 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 The Tempodrome was originally a circus tent outside the Brandenburg Gate, but they had to take it down to build a government building. So they relocated it and built the Tempodrome in the same structure as a circus tent. This is used for cultural events and some sporting events like tonight's boxing between Alexander Povetkin and Eddie Chambers here in Berlin.
Good action through the first five rounds. Now the man has been down. Chambers has landed some very good right hands in this fight. The swelling under the left eye of Pumpkinsky. Is Chambers being too patient, Lennox? He's being a little patient. What he should be doing is blocking that jab by Provetkin and coming back with his own jab. Right now, Povetkin's taking his time because he realizes he doesn't want to punch himself out and he's getting a little winded, so he's picking his shots. And, before he and as this fight's worn on, Povetkin's done a better job of landing some of those shots to the head in between Chambers' guards. Yeah, he's settled down a bit, which was important for him. You know, in, in the first couple of rounds, he wanted to go in there and throw some punches. Now he's gotten used to Chambers and he's really picking his punches and... This is what he needs to do at this moment because he did, did seem a little winded in the earlier rounds. There's some redness around the left eye of Chambers where Pavyekin has been able to land some right hands. Well, Pavyekin's left eye seems to be closing. Chambers lands a good right hand to the body. Pavyekin answered with one of his own. Left hook by Chambers. He got cautious for a low blow about 30 seconds ago. Pavyetkin taps him to the body. I, I don't know how much of uh, the Pavyetkin's success, insofar as he's had success in this fight, has been a result of Chambers laying back. Pavyetkin is busy enough that he makes it difficult for Eddie Chambers to let his punches go without getting hit. No, well, what, what's happening is after Pavyetkin throws his combination, Eddie stands there, he doesn't answer. You know, Emmanuel still would say, answer him. Don't let him, don't sit there and take the punches. Answer back with some shots. What happens, the judge, the judge has seen that, sees this, and feels that you're winning the round because, you know, Chambers ain't doing nothing. He's just laying back, wait, waiting, waiting for those shots when he should be answering. Doubles up the left hand to the body, does Chambers. And when the Chambers throws combinations, it looks sweet, it looks good, it looks fast. Particularly with our punches thrown in this round, and you see Pavyetkin much busier than Chambers here in the round. This has been Pavyetkin's maybe best round of the fight. And Chambers is a guy that usually has a pretty good work rate. Well, the good thing about Chambers is not getting hit with any, any good shots. He's still, the shots are still taking a little strain good out of him. right hand by Chambers, Lennox. Yeah, good right hand. Quick right hand to end the round. Probably not enough, though, to steal the round. Sound like me, don't it? Okay, you sitting there bullshitting, man. You didn't come over there for this. Did you? Well, let's go. Let's go to work, man. What's wrong? Here, buddy. Halfway, Eddie. Halfway. Okay. okay. It's halfway, man. You just letting it go. You giving the fight away, man. Okay. All you got to do is back this guy up and stay downstairs with that right hand to the body. Both hands downstairs, man. Stop looking for the one punch. Are you? Look at me, man. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Left, right, left. This is how you go. And you have to push. Keep pushing. If you go left, right, left, it works. It works. Don't forget that. And don't stay where you are. Don't stand there. Keep moving. Get set for the start of round number seven. Tongue lashing for Eddie Chambers in between round six and seven. Lennox mentioned earlier in the fight that Yekin looked winded early. In between several rounds, including this one, he's breathing through his mouth, Lennox. Yeah, I mean, well, he's putting out the work, so, he, you know, this is why you get tired. If you're going to put out the work like that, you're going you're gonna to win yourself. But uh, in a fight, you have to be careful because you still have to remember that he's still got a couple rounds to go. All right, let's check in with Harold Letterman. <laughs> okay, Bob. You know, for four rounds, I had this fight all Eddie Chambers. I mean, he was out working about punching him, doing everything. But in rounds five and six, Alexander Povetkin worked for three minutes. He really did. He just won rounds five and six going away. He's in good shape. He throws a heck of a lot of punches, just like he's doing here, and he never stops. He's plotting. I mean, the guy is a plotter. He's slow. There's no question. Not the quickest guy in the world, but in good shape, and he works three minutes around. So I got it all even, 57-57, three rounds apiece, but Povetkin's got momentum. All right, Hal. One minute into the seventh. Good scorecard. Um, I agree. I don't think Pavyekin is slow. I think maybe his hands look slow compared to Chambers, but I think he has a good short 
Pretty fast punches for a heavyweight. And he throws punches in bunches, you know. Quite active for a heavyweight. He throws a lot of punches, which is important. As, as far as being, making sure that they count is another thing. Pavekin's taking a deep breath after a combination, which is concerning to me. Good right hand from Pavekin, and Chambers walked right through it. Now, according to Coffee Box, the heavyweight average of punches thrown per round is 46. So it really illustrates how busy Pavekin has been with his punch output. Though we see when it comes to punches landing, Chambers landing significantly more, although not over the last several rounds. Yeah. And if you notice, Kalvetkin, after throwing a combination, his hands come down, so he is a bit winded. He has to be careful of that, because every round counts. I wonder why Chambers, as Kalvetkin steps in with the right hand, he had that success where he fainted the jab and then threw the right hand. He has not gone back to that series. Left shot by Chambers. Bob Yetkin's always first. Trying to just pour his way through Chambers. A can by Chambers. Caught the chin of Bob Yetkin. Digs a left hook to the body. You know, this is a, is a combination that the Eastern Europeans always throw. They throw a right hand and end off with a left, which is a jab, which is a straight. On February 23rd, HBO Sports presents a very special night of boxing programming. On the East Coast, viewers will see the premiere of Joe Lewis, America's Hero Betrayed, followed by a heavyweight unification fight between Vladimir Klitschko and Sultan Abragamov. On the West Coast, viewers will see our live boxing, followed by our Joe Lewis film. You do not want to miss the Joe Lewis film. It is spectacular. Yeah, I concur in that. We're going to see a Povetkin right hand. He's starting to find his range a little bit. We get set for the start of round number eight. Scheduled for 12. Lennox, in your opinion, what has Pavetkin done to turn the tables here against Chambers? Well, what he's done is outwork Chambers at the time. You know, being a judge looking at this fight, I'm saying, I'm looking at Pavetkin, I'm saying he's, he's putting in the work. And this is what you need to do to win a fight. But yet, been averaging 72 punches thrown per round, as I mentioned in the last round. The heavyweight average is 46 thrown per round, according to CompuBox. So he's really just outworking champions. Pavetkin, as Lennox mentioned off the top of the broadcast, his experience against slick guys, and in the Chris Bird fight, got better as the fight went on. Chambers, on the other hand, throughout his recent career against some decent heavyweights, at a moment where it looked like he should be completely dominating the fight, took his foot off the gas a little bit, and maybe that's happening again here. Told us it happened in the Calvin Brock fight, his last fight. And this is the same situation. You got Povetkin throwing punches, Eddie laying back, but he's not answering with the shots, and this is what he needs to do. That time he tried to answer back. Last Eddie has slowed down. And Povetkin is starting the action each time. Every time they break, he's, he's back at it and starting the action. Which is good. This is what you're supposed to do. This is how you want to fight. This is how you impress the judges. And Povetkin's impressing the judges right now just with his work rate. Ch Ch Chambers looks like he's almost doing a, a kind of rope a dope in a sense. Allowing uh, Povetkin to really punch himself out, but we're waiting for something from Eddie to come out to say, "Okay, you punch yourself out. Let me start my my work and knock you out." Basically, he'll throw that left hook to the body and then follow the right. That time he worked in an uppercut. Rope a dope works 
See? If you have the power to stop the guy, do you think Chambers has the power to stop Povetkin? Well, he hasn't thrown that many punches so far. Look at Povetkin. Povetkin has almost punched himself out. One good shot by Eddie Chambers may change the course of history in this fight. Again, it's Povetkin first. Chambers blocks most of it, but he doesn't answer back. Works the uppercut in this time. See. And it's four back from Pavyetkin. The right hand to the body by Pavyetkin. Roll to the end of the eighth. Now a shot by Chambers. Shoots the right hand in to punctuate the end of the eighth round. We need every round, you understand me? You need every round. You gotta keep the pressure on him. You keep the pressure on him, baby, it's your night. You understand me? Work the jab, this combination, don't worry about power, he's dead tight. When you get inside, work under and bring it up top. I need the water, please. Okay. Give me the water. Give me that water okay? again. I need Steve. you to start here and come up top with your combination. You got me? Hey, Eddie. No. You're right. You're right. You know, left, right, left. Told you a million times. times. You know, that's nothing else. That's all you need to do, essentially. Nothing else. And he's not going to have an easy time with you. Got that? First the left one, then the right. And then the left one ends as well. Got it. Sanya, go for it. Got me. Let's go. Bell tolls to begin round number nine, scheduled for 12. Eddie Chambers, 30-0 with 16 knockouts against Alexander Povetkin, 14-0 with 11 knockouts. Reigning 2004, Olympic gold medalist in the super heavyweight division. No knockdown so far in the fight. Chambers had his moments early. Povetkin has used a high work rate to gain control of this fight. Right hand to the body by Pavietti. See, there you go. Pavetkin pushing the action, starting the action. Good uppercut right hand, though, by Chambers. Yeah, but we need more of it. If he wants to be successful in this fight, he needs to throw more combinations, especially starting off with a jab. I haven't seen a jab for a minute. There's a jab and a right hand. Lennox on command. Towards the end of the last round, and now through this round, Chambers looks like he's going back to outclassing Pavetkin in the middle of the ring. But Pavetkin's work rate is still keeping Eddie in a defensive mode through much of the round. You can hear the corner of Chambers saying, step to him. But again, if he Pavyekin throws his hands, he's getting the better of the action, Chambers. Nice combination inside by Chambers. Well, that can throwing out his arms because you know they seem a bit tight right now, and he's putting he's throwing a lot of punches, so he is a bit tired, but he's still winning this round. He's, throw, he's still throwing a lot of punches. Eddie needs to really step up the pace right now if he, if he wants to win this fight. Chambers has mixed in a few more uppercuts. But again, it's Puff yet get first. Right hand from Puff Yetkin. Chambers slaps with the left. See Eddie Chambers trying to follow Buddy McGurk's instructions from the corner in real time. Buddy says, work the stick. Chambers throws out the jab. Step to him, Chambers does it. But it's like McGirt has to fight the fight from remote control from the corner. You better keep yelling. Man. <laughs> that Eddie's just so waiting. Good. He's like he's waiting for that perfect opportunity. To, that's not going to come. You've got to make that opportunity out there. You gotta throw a punch, you gotta throw that jab, you gotta throw that body punch. You can't wait and watch the other guy throw punches at you. Again, it's Pavetkin, the busier of the two. As we end the ninth round. 
Lay back. Put the legs out. Let's go. Let's not put him out. Let's not pick it up, Eddie. You can't take no shots. Okay, now listen. When you push him off, you. When you push him off, you. Hey, Rosetta. Rosetta. Okay. You got to ease up. Oh, okay, good. And listen to me. When you push him off, you. next time you pitch, you push him off. You, you, you push him with your right hand. You Drop a hook downstairs. You got Eddie, this thing. what you're doing is you're throwing combinations. He's coming back. It's not looking good. Okay? Okay? Don't look for the one punch. Combinations. That's all you have to do is throw combinations off the jet. Okay. Understand me? You must start with the left one, finish with the left one, all the same. You can you hear what I'm saying? All right? And then the right of the line. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever supposed to the first to start? Alexander Povetkin and Eddie Chambers ready for the start of round number 10, scheduled for 12. Let's check in with Harold Butterman, see how he has it scored. Okay, but 87, 84, six rounds to three. Alexander Povetkin. Bobby, he's won five rounds in a row. I mean, he just keeps constantly outworking Chambers. When Chambers lands a real good combination, he doesn't sustain the attack. I mean, it's two good punches, and he stops. And Povetkin takes over. Like Lennox is saying, he's landing a clean shots, constantly outworking, just like he's doing there. Anyway, six rounds to three, Povetkin. It was an interesting exchange in the corner where McGirt said, to Chambers, it's not looking good. And philosophically, there's a question. You know, sometimes a busier fighter looks better than the less busy fighter, even if he's not truly winning the rounds. But here, as Harold mentioned, the busier fighter's actually winning the rounds with his work rate, even though many of the punches are being blocked. Yes, it's called impressing the judges. You know, you got four judges looking at a fight, and if all the judges are watching you throw punches, they're gonna give you the fight. Sure, and that often happens, but here, Lennox, I think forget about impressing the judges, he's correctly impressing the judges. The judges are duly impressed. He's maintained a ferocious work rate. Last couple of rounds, he's thrown over 90 punches in each round. Right hand snuck in from Povetkin. Chambers with the uppercut. And that's the first uppercut that Chambers has thrown that I've seen. And this is what he has to do, throw some combinations. I mean, you can't follow a guy, guy around the ring, wait for him to throw punches, and then try and throw one punch in there. you got to throw combinations. It sounds like the commentary is leaning towards describing the situation from Chambers' point of view. I think that's because the impression that's being left is that Chambers should be better than Povetkin. But so far, he's not been. Well, when he throws punches, he's better than Kovetkin. But he needs to throw a lot more punches uh, uh, to do that. Because when he started out in the fight, he was throwing some great combinations. He was catching Kovetkin. But now, he's just laying back. And we can't see the true talent that he has because he's holding it back. He's, he's, not, he's not throwing the punches. He's not doing what... what if, that is psychological makeup that Pavetkin has as part of being a successful prize fighter. And he strings a combination together that snaps back the head of Chambers. And, you know, there's an experience aspect as well. If Chambers has had more fights at this level, you know, he would be a lot further along. So this is good experience for him in either case. And again, it's even after Chambers has a shot that lands, Pavetkin throws the combination back. Even if it doesn't land, he's always answering. You're, let, you're letting it go, man. You hear me? You got me? I don't know. What's wrong, man? You can't come this far and just let it go, man. We ain't looking for just no pep talks and shit. You gotta be willing to okay, fight. Dude. You gotta you gotta get him out of here. There's no yeah. ifs, or buts about it. Okay? You got to get him out of there. That means you can't stand it with your hands down. You got to start throwing punches. They don't have to punches. be that hard. They just have to be in combinations, man. You think it's all too easy? It's not. Where's going? And where you can go? Side step. See that? When he's coming in. You have to get him out of there. You got to stop bullshit. This is where you got to dig deep. This is where the champions come out. You understand? This is where you got to dig deep, baby. Darren Pep talk in the corner of Eddie Chambers. 
in between rounds 10 and 11. If you're wondering, the latest knockout Chambers has ever occurred was in the seventh round against Derek Rossi last year. And Kajekin in the corner looks physically ill. He's looked so exhausted, yet he's the one coming out with the mentality that he needs to throw punches, where Chambers looks relaxed and fresh in the corner, but is not busy enough. And like I said, he seems like he's waiting for that perfect punch. The perfect punch is not there. You have to work to make that perfect punch Great come out. Right? Yeah. Pop Yetkin gets the middle part of this fight always first. And if Chambers lands, Pop Yetkin answers back. Pop Yetkin steps into a combination. No response from Chambers. Of Yetkin is fighting like the hungrier fighter. And it's odd because he turned pro with more fanfare. He was the decorated amateur. He's made more money as a professional. And quite rightfully so because he's got more to lose. He can't let, uh, he's saying he's not letting anybody come into his hometown and beat him. So he's pulling out the work. He's letting it all hang out. This is what Chambers should be doing. He should be letting it all hang out at this, at this moment. He's got six minutes of work to do. But McGurk said, you got nine minutes, can you do it? He said, yeah, well, let's do it. That's what he should be doing. And he doesn't have nine minutes anymore. He's just letting the sand drip out of the hourglasses. But that kid puts a combination together to the body. And at this point, he's looking like a spawn partner. And he needs to be looking like a contender, somebody that wants to win this fight. Things seem like they're not coming together for him. And he seems a bit frustrated in there. But, you know, in these, in these situations, you've got to let it all hang out. You have to have different speeds, and right now I see Chambers at the same speed he started. He needs to change speed. If you look at Povetkin, Povetkin's letting it all hang, he's showing a lot of punches. Yeah, we saw the connect numbers. Povetkin has thrown 65 punches to Chambers 9 in this round, according to CompuBox. Wow. And as a result of his activity, Pavyekin's activity, Chambers is forced to stalk, something he's really not natural doing. And as a result of that, Pavyekin is landing more clean punches. See, what, what Pavyekin's doing is smart right now. He's, he's going in, throwing the combinations, then he's taking a step back and he's moving around because he realizes Chambers is not throwing any punches and it's going to take him a long while to get to him because he's just flat-footed and, and stepping towards him. The only time Chambers can really hit Povetkin is when Povetkin comes close to Chambers. Final seconds of the 11th. It has been a lunch pail, blue-collar effort from Alexander Povetkin. Working, 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 and outworking Eddie Chambers. So, position. Beautiful. Beautiful. Wonderful. This year. Breathe. This year, you're right. Breathe. Turn around. Oh, man. Eddie, you Eddie. have to knock him out. You got to go there and knock him out. Okay. No, you're saying okay, but you're not doing it. You, ain't you can't afford it. Out. This is it. Three minutes. Just knock him out. Three minutes, out, Eddie. Man. Yeah, you have to grab him, grab him. Can you hear me? Listen, listen what I'm saying. And always finish with the left one. And then that's it. And then that's it. Left first, left last. All right, let's go. Don't get in no clenches with him. Keep your hands moving. Twelfth and final round, Alexander Povetkin and Eddie Chambers. Buddy McGurk told Chambers, you've got to go in there and knock him out. Chambers says yes. Buddy McGurk said, don't say yes. You need to go in there and do it. Because that's what that's what he didn't do before. So to, as a guy who's not a big puncher, to go for a knockout, you have to be willing to get knocked out yourself. I don't know if Chambers has that kind of approach. Well, Povetkin has definitely changed speeds in this fight. And he looks more relaxed. But you know, as far as Eddie Chambers, he's still in that same pace. You know, you have to learn to be able to change speeds and let it all hang out at different times in the fight. And this is the, the last round, the last three minutes. Let it go. Well, we asked, Time to shine. We asked Bob Yeskin yesterday about the success of the Russian heavyweights, and he said, old school training with old school trainers. This has been an old school gutsy performance by him. Peter Hedges. 
And incidentally, he has hit Chambers cleanly a lot over the second half of the fight. Not as a percentage of the punches he's thrown, but whatever. You know, he's hit him a lot. And, even and that one, takes skill. Even the ones that didn't hit him, he's still hitting the arms, and there's still that power and, and body involved. So, you know, even that, that punch, hard punch, but still affects Chambers because he's taking it. He has to absorb it. Well, when you take a look at this fight, Chambers has become a spectator of the second half of the fight. Popjetkin just digging in. Chambers has no answer. You know, Chambers doesn't re must, he must don't realize this is the last round, but Povetkin realizes this is the last round. That's why he's letting it all hang out. He's putting it in the work, and he's, he's making sure that he's, he's going to win this fight. Well, maybe it really speaks to the fact that Max mentioned earlier. Is he willing to go out with his boots on and take those risks? He said he would, but he's not. Well, we're not in there taking those shots from Pajekin. Maybe Chambers tasted his power early in the fight. He thought, I can't get caught with anything. I have to be careful. And Pajekin also walked through some excellent pinpoint shots from Chambers, which may have discouraged him. Chambers misses the counter. Povetkin is doing the right thing. He's staying far from him because there's no way Eddie Chambers is going to come after him. All Eddie Chambers is, is sitting back and waiting to absorb those punches. So what he does, Povetkin, he goes in, throws a combination, then steps out of the way and walks around. There he goes, walks around. He has time to break. At that time, Chambers is supposed to be going after him and trying to score a knockout, at least trying to catch him with a punch. Too little, too late. Alexander Povetkin of Russia. Not glitzy, but very effective here in Berlin. Over, over. Good fight, good fight, both of you, good fight. Excellent performance by Pavyetkin as he just went to work in the second half of the fight. What? You know what we do? Fight the swimming, the basketball, and all that boy. Hey, listen, Eddie. It's a, it's a combination of things. Harold Letterman's scorecard 117 111 as Bob Yetkin just dominates rounds 5 through 12. You hear me? Eddie Chambers had things going early, but the volume of punches from Alexander Povetkin, a huge determining factor in this fight. It will go to the judges' scorecards. And here are the three judges. Dion Duarte from South Africa, Phil Edwards from England, and Alejandro Lopez from Mexico. Not your normal grouping of judges that you get for championship fights or high-caliber fights. So not a lot of resume on the three judges. Promoter Joe Goosen's um, idea here, he's Chambers promoter, was to bring in international judges from an international setting instead of local judges who might tend to favor the local fighter. And in the last two rounds, according to CompuBox, when Chambers' camp was urging him to go for the knockout, he threw 15 punches in round 11 and only 16 punches in round 12. Which, if you're Alexis Arguello, might work, but um, or George Foreman, or George Foreman, or a real savage puncher, which Chambers is not. You see the left eye of Povetkin. That happened early in the fight when Chambers was having success with the right hand. Impressive performance by Povetkin. He willed himself in this fight, really. He did, and and also I think we understated his skill a bit. By the end of the fight, he was the successful counterpuncher outboxing Eddie Chambers in the middle of the ring. All right, they tally the judges' scorecards as we await the official decision for Alexander Povetkin and Eddie Chambers. Will Chambers suffer his first loss, or will it be Povetkin? But, you, but guess what? Hey, and you know it. You know what? That's good. Here's Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the scorecards. Dion Duarte, 117-111. Alejandro Cid Lopez, 119-109. Phil Edwards, 116-112. All to the winner by unanimous decision. Now the number one heavyweight contender in the world for the IBF title. He is the Ruski Vitez, the white 
Lion, Alexander, Sasha Povetki. Unanimous decision for Alexander Povetkin. As he outworks Eddie Chambers over the balance of 12 rounds. Chambers had things going early, but Povetkin took over this fight in the later half of the fight. Take a look at the final punch numbers according to CompuBox. And you see, as we mentioned earlier, the heavyweight average of punches thrown per round, 46. Povetkin well over that mark. 929 punches thrown. Chambers had the higher connect percentage, but it was the inactivity over the second half of the fight where Povetkin was able to just outwork Chambers and outwork him to a unanimous decision victory. Power punches. Again, Chambers would land that right hand, especially early in the fight. Povetkin threw a lot of power shots, but it was the volume of punches, the four punches every time Chambers threw two that was the deciding factor in this fight. So the numbers tell the tale here in Berlin as Alexander Povetkin picks up the victory, unanimous decision victory over Eddie Chambers. And Lennox Lewis, obviously, is someone who knows a thing or two about the heavyweight division. What were your impressions, first of all, of Alexander Povetkin and his desire to win this fight? Because things weren't going right, but he found a way. He found a way. He used his experience, and he threw a lot of punches. Really, it, it came to a man that was in front of him throwing punches or standing still, holding up his hands. The fight became easy after a while because once a guy's holding up his hands, all you need to do is throw punches. Doesn't matter if you hit him or not, the judges are still gonna say, hey, you're gonna win that round, you're winning the fight. In order to win a fight, you need to throw punches. You cannot sit back and lay, lay back, you need to throw punches. And especially if a guy's throwing punches at you, uh, you gotta answer him back. Did you see enough from Chambers where he can learn from this and go on to bigger and better things? Oh, absolutely. You know, I, I was telling his trainer, he needs to box against amateurs, take it back to the gym, and learn to throw more punches. And especially when, you know, if you're going to block punches, come back with shots and don't allow anybody to throw more punches than you in a fight. All right, we turn our attention to Max Kellerman here at ringside. Max, what did we learn about these two young heavyweights tonight? Well, Eddie Chambers' problem, and it showed up a little bit even in wins against Dominic Gwynn and Calvin Brock, is he doesn't hit hard enough to make his opponent fear what's coming back at them, though he's an excellent counterpuncher. As a result, his opponent simply starts to outwork him. I think the best idea for Eddie Chambers, who I really enjoy watching fight, is a move down to cruiserweight, where I think he would be an absolutely top-notch fighter who would at least challenge any of those top-notch cruiserweights in title fights. Pavetkin, he now gets the winner of Vladimir Klitschko and Ibragimov. Klitschko is favored in that fight. So the question is, how would Pavetkin do against Klitschko? It's the most likely question. Povetkin is outsized against Klitschko. Klitschko is a big, powerful puncher and an excellent boxer. But Povetkin is undefeated still. He's determined. He's skilled. And I would make him live, even as an underdog, against any heavyweight in the world, including Vladimir Klitschko, who would rightly be the favorite heading into that fight. And you mentioned Vladimir Klitschko against Sultan Abragamov, a fight you can see right here on HBO, World Championship Boxing, on February the 23rd. Lennox, Max, great working with you. It's been fun being here in Berlin, but the star tonight, Alexander Povetkin, a unanimous decision victory over Eddie Chambers. Let's take a look at some events coming up here on HBO. On February the 16th, live on HBO pay-per-view, it's the rematch between middleweight champion Kelly Pavlik and Jermaine Taylor, who was knocked out by Pavlik back in September. One week later, it's a special night of boxing on HBO. East Coast viewers will see the premiere of Joe Lewis, America's Hero Betrayed followed by a heavyweight unification fight between Vladimir Klitschko and Sultan Abragamov. West Coast viewers will see live boxing first, then the Joe Lewis film thereafter. If you've missed any part of tonight's telecast, you can catch it in its entirety on HBO tomorrow at 9 a.m. or on HBO 2 at 5 p.m. Tonight's telecast will be rebroadcast to final time, also on HBO 2, Tuesday night at midnight. Coming up next on HBO, stay tuned for Deaf Comedy Jam. So for our entire HBO crew, this is Bob Papa saying good night and thanks for being with us in Berlin.
This has been a presentation of HBO Sports.